This episode has been brought to you by Flowstate, the unlimited web flow development service. Find out more at flowstate.dev. Hello and welcome to another episode of Web Flow & Co where I teach you the underlying code you're writing web flow. I'm just going to read this intro out verbatim because I wrote a script on the way home and I couldn't do much better because it's quite confusing this episode. So what started out as a rant on Twitter about wishing conditional fields in Webflow were server-side rendered after tackling a complex issue for a client using FinSuite's filtering actually resulted in a completely different solution which I figured out whilst filming this episode. But ultimately I was trying to solve an issue with FinSuite's CMS filter whereby Boolean values given by Webflow's toggle are handled using FinSuite's toggle option. I needed a way to filter elements in the collection based on whether a text value was being used. But as I say, during the filming of this episode, I figured out a completely new way, whereas before, server-side rendering was the only option. To be clear, I'd still like conditional fields to be server-side renders because at the moment, Webflow just adds a class to hide them. But ultimately, we're going to dig into FinSuite CMS filter and take it to the next level in boss mode by using their load API to solve my issue. So with that, let's jump into it. Okay, so here we have a basic filtering system. It filters on the left-hand side here, and there's a collection list on the right. And we're gonna handle this checkbox, first of all, um, that basically says this user is subscribed or something like that. And we are going to use FinSuite's toggle button option. And the way we do that is that we actually need a embed element that has the value true or false in it. And Let's, let's just get that working. I can show you what's what going on. And so we're going to wrap this in a um, div and add our embed. And inside of here, we're just going to have that featured. And what you'll see is false, 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 true, true, true. And if we just quickly look in our CMS collection, featured is a toggle switch. And this works perfectly. This is exactly what we want. We get that true false statement in the UI here. In fact, let's get this filtering working now. So first of all, on the checkbox itself, we want to add our FinSuite CMS filter field um, value. And we're just going to call this featured. And then over on the embed, we're just going to add the same value. And if we publish that, refresh this, and you can see that all of the falses go and we're just left with the true. So that's working perfectly well. Now let's just do a bit of cleanup for the UI. What I've, what I've got here is a hidden class, um, which should hide that true or false statement, but it still allow it to work. And this is what I was talking about when it comes to server-side rendering. So we can now conditionally show this based on whether features toggle, but you'll notice that it's only toggles that allow us to do this conditional rendering. And this is server-side rendering. Uh, sorry, not conditional rendering, sorry, visibility and user access. Whereas conditional rendering is what we'll get into a little bit later on. So you can see that the UI has been cleaned up. Um, we've got the true or false statement hiding, and we've got uh, only subscribed or featured people that are showing up there. Now, the issue comes into this has message filter. So as I said in the intro, what if we want to filter by the very presence of a value, not by the text value itself, which is how filtering traditionally works. And this is where it becomes more difficult and where server-side rendering of conditional fields would come in handy. But the way that um, FinSuite's filtering works is that with texts and paragraphs and, and whatever you're filtering with, inside of the, of the associated filter item, is looking for the, the actual word has message. Now we want to treat this as a Boolean um, system. So we've got to do some magic behind the scenes to, to make that work. And we'll go, we'll go through that now. So first of all, let's hook this up, go into our collection here, and we give this one a, a message. Now you can see we've got two, please subscribe, messages in two of our items here and then the rest don't have any messages at all. So once again, what we're going to do, we're going to wrap that in a div and we're going to insert here an embed element. We're not going to touch anything in that embed element because we're going to trick FinSuite's toggle button system into treating this like a, a Boolean. So what it's doing, it's looking for an embed element and it's looking for a true or false value statement. But we're gonna put true or false inside of the embed element and then that should trick FinSuite's thing. So 
it's the same deal. We go to has message, should be, we're gonna to go to the checkbox, apologies, we're gonna checkbox, and we're gonna go message. And once again, we're gonna go here, we're gonna go message. But the trick is now is that what we're gonna do, we're gonna make up our own uh, data fake toggle, I don't know, make up, a, make up a data attribute. And we're gonna set this as the message. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like on the front end. So if we go into here, you'll see the embed element here, data fake toggle has the text in, but with an element where it doesn't contain a message, you can see that attribute is empty and this is gonna be how we're gonna hook into it. I mean, traditionally, and the way I sort of did it in the past is that I would set sort of conditional um, feature here because um, conditional visibility here, hoping that I would be able to hide it from FinSuite's filtering and then it should work fine. But what I came to learn is that conditional visibility is not server-side rendered. It doesn't remove from the DOM. We can't get FinSuite's filtering. So I needed to figure out another way to trick it. Anyway, I digress. So we can leave that there. That's fine. What we're going to do is go into our JavaScript here and I'm going to paste in a bit of code before the loading of the CMS filter and just wrap this in a script. So we are going to find all of the data fake toggle elements on the page. And remember those are on embed elements. And if they exist on the page, this is just a security feature. We're gonna loop through each of them and just check for that value, right? Check that there's a value inside of the data fake toggle thing. If there's a value, then it'll obviously say, in our case, please subscribe. Whereas if it's empty, then it'll be an empty string. And then we can convert that to a Boolean value. And that's why I've said um, that's true or false. So, and that's why I've stored it in a value called has attribute. And then we can set the inner HTML of the current embed element as true or false. Okay, so let's see the result of that real quick. Publish this. And you can see that true exists. Now I'm interested to know why false is not there. Oh, conditional, because I've got the conditional visibility here. So there we go, if we remove that, you can see the false statement there. It was a bit lost for a second then. So we've got this true or false entering, and now because we've done it before FinSuite's CMS filter loads, then we should be able to just filter based on that, and then I can go back, uh, add the hidden class, and then that cleans up our UI, and everything is working perfectly as we expect it to. All that's well and good if you have just a short collection list that you wanna filter on the page as it loads. The issue comes is when you wanna load more items using the CMS load. Issue being is that <clears throat> those new items won't have this treatment that we've done associated with them. So we need to figure out a way to do all that. So let's dive into this one. This gets a bit meaty now. So let's jump in and fake load. I mean, we're not fake loading it. We are going to actually load it. So if we go into, we go all solutions and then go to CMS load, we can copy this script, dump it into our page, set this up to load. We're just going to paginate and we're just going to set two items per page. We're going to set this as a load. So we get our elements loading in. Looks great. Because our elements loaded in after the page has loaded, we haven't got an opportunity to apply our crazy JavaScript to turn this into a Boolean value. So you can see if I filter by uh, has message, it's not picking up this one. This one still works because we did that completely legitimately and, and it works perfectly well with, with the filtering system. But so now we need to get this one working. And what fins we provide is an API we can tap into. And essentially what we're gonna do is loop through all of the items, apply our crazy JavaScript to add true or false to the embed element, and then reload the list. And that'll become more clear in just a second. Let's just get it working. Um, we're already using CMS load, but we can, we can now have access to their API. Script, paste this in, and let's console log list instance. And this will only fire when the, the, the entire CMS has completely loaded. 
So you can see that it loaded, we get this console log statement. And then what we have is access, whether they're loaded or not, we have access to the entire CMS collection that FinSuite's loading through. This is how they make things fast and they cache things and all the rest of it. And we get access to that raw element. So let's basically loop through all these elements, change the HTML structure of those elements and then reload them back into the list system. So the first thing now we're gonna do is wrap this uh, in a function. So we're gonna um, remove fake toggle inside there. And we're gonna accept the list of items. And so here, let's copy the name of that function, replace that. We're just gonna call fake toggle with that list of instances, but we're gonna manipulate this list now. And in fact, let's um, new list equals list instance. We're gonna change this to make, we're just gonna clean this up a little bit to make it easier to work with. So we've got list instance, and if we go here, it is items, items, dot map and what this is going to do is going to loop over each of the items in the array and then return a new array right and you'll see this take shape in just a second so we're going to return items dot element close that off and just to show you what we have new list we have a new array with just the elements in them that's all that's all we need clean all this up and then pass that into our remove fake toggle function. And so now we've got a list of our elements here and we're gonna loop through them. In fact, we're just gonna protect, we're just gonna protect ourselves here by going if items.length and then we're gonna do what we need to do. We're gonna loop through each of the items and so we get the element and from the element, we're gonna query selector and just find all of the fake toggles in there. And then we're gonna, once again, if source dot length. So again, we're checking if there's actually elements in there because we don't want our code to break. Then we're gonna loop through each of those um, we just name it toggle. And we're just checking if the toggle has string in the um, attribute there. And then we are setting the inner HTML of the toggle. So we've just redone our, we've just re reconfigured our function to basically take in a list of values or a list of elements and remove those. I mean, we can clean this up a little bit, maybe move that down. It doesn't need to be before anymore because we're, we're just doing that. Let's also uh, return, we want to return items. So we've got a new array now, a new list of items that we can now do some stuff with. So if I, so new list equals that, and let's just console.log new list. It's our new list. And now this is where the magic happens. So if we have a look at the docs here, you can see that we've got access to a whole bunch of uh, methods and stuff that we can actually do on the, on the list instance. And the one we're interested in, we're interested in two, clear items and add items. So we're gonna clear the list. We're gonna empty um, FinSuite's sort of memory as it were, and then we're gonna add our own new list. So list instance, clear items, and then list instance, add items. I'm gonna add that new list. So basically just recreating our, uh, our own list and we can just delete that there, clean it up a little bit. And that should be Cool, let's run our function. Hopefully it's done all of our magic. And if we hit this, then we get our brand new list of filtering via Boolean. 
my next bit of advice would be to add prerender.io. Now that's an episode that I, I mean, let me know if you want me to do that episode, but essentially because of all this JavaScript that's loading and it's taking its time, it's terrible for SEO and quite frankly, the user experience is pretty bad. So I would definitely look into prerender.io to cache the eventual output of all what we've just done there. So again, let me know if you want an episode on that. So thank you once again for tuning in. Uh, like, subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, happy no coding. <laughs>